G'day guys, it's Mark here, and I've got another video on Corvette C8. Corvette C8 is on the agenda for Australia, and it will be sold by our GM Holden dealers. There's quite a few things we'd all like to know about local Corvette C8 sales, and the main two things people want to know are firstly, when will C8 be available at GM Holden dealerships, and secondly, how much will it cost? Stay tuned and I'll run through what I know and what I expect regarding local Corvette C8 in Australia. Ever since the announcement C8 will be built in right-hand drive, the question many people ask me is when will the C8 Corvette go on sale in Australia? Holden hasn't come out with any timing yet, but there have been murmurings of more news soon. I'm not sure if this will happen in the close future, and I'm not even sure if Holden has been given exact timing yet by GM North America. During Corvettes at Carlisle, the world's biggest Corvette gathering, Corvette Executive Chief Engineer Tad Yuckter had a few words to say about the right-hand drive Corvettes. We did announce at the reveal uh, that we're intending to sell this globally, including right-hand drive, so Japan, UK, Australia, now we'll have a, uh, a right-hand drive version. Um, so traditionally we roll out uh, export vehicles uh, later, and uh, I guess stay tuned, but it won't be too terribly long. Of course, GM have productionized the US left-hand drive cars first and will need to build quite a batch of them to satisfy as much of the initial internal demand as possible before starting to build customer right-hand drive cars. Their build of left-hand drive cars will be slowed down by GM's desire to ramp up production slowly, with production quality as a priority. Building mid-engine C8s is quite a departure from what they've been building in the past at Bowling Green. From my GM experience, it typically takes about six months to get right-hand drive export cars in production. But even when they do, I expect the UK cars will be first in line, followed by the Japan cars, and only then the Australian cars. But I think GM will be surprised how big the sales are in Australia, same as how Ford marketing was totally caught off guard as to how well their Mustang would sell here. American cars are very popular in Australia. The big problem we currently have with sales here is the shocking state of the exchange rate between the Australian dollar and the US dollar. It wasn't that long ago we were at parity with the US dollar. Now we're only getting about 68 cents for our dollar. Imagine if we were still at parity. We'd be starting our calculations with an Australian price of $60,000. Then adding a few costs to that to get the cars here with the current exchange rate, it's now nearly 90,000 Australian dollars, plus the extra costs. Something that will influence the start of sales in Australia will be any difference between the Australian design rules, the ADRs, compared to those in the UK. If no changes are required to the UK cars to sell them in Australia, that will speed up the availability for Australia. Our ADRs are gradually lining up with the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe UNECE regulations and in general Australia accepts most UNECE rules as an alternative to the ADRs. However this is not a given. The individual ADR must specifically nominate the UNECE regulation as an alternative standard. I'll show you what I mean. Here's the third edition Australian design rules. And down here it says harmonisation. The function of this ADR is to facilitate the UNECE regulations, etc. If we click on the link here, we get to the relevant design rule. And down here under application of UNECE regulations, we have a new vehicle or a vehicle component is taken to comply with an ADR if etc etc. The ADR specifies a UNECE regulation as an alternative standard. So the ADR must specify the UNECE regulation as an alternative. Let's go back and look at a regulation. Here's ADR 83 as an example. 
ADR83 covers external noise. Looking through the contents, I can see item 6 is listed as alternative standards. Under 6.1 M and N category, which is what we want, it says the UNECE for Europe regulation number 51, etc., etc., deemed to be equivalent to the technical requirements of this vehicle standard. So this one is OK. Now I'm not an expert on the ADRs and I don't have time to read through all of them. So I'm not sure which ones may cause issues. Maybe I'll try and get some expert opinion. The other thing that's important is the Australian ANCAP rating. Without going into detail, ANCAP is a company that buys and tests cars and gives them a safety rating up to a maximum of five stars. There are some strange quirks in ANCAP's rating system, which mean a car needs to be specifically configured to achieve the highest rating in Australia. Because ANCAP has a large marketing budget and hence can have a big influence over a car's reputation, the car makers often need to tailor the car to get a high ANCAP rating. Now I'm sure Holden will be talking with their US counterparts to ensure the Corvette C8 doesn't get a bad rating like what happened to Ford Australia with their Mustang when it first arrived as a right-hand drive car. Having said all that, I believe the start of sales in Australia will probably take place during the last quarter of 2020. This is based on Taj saying cars would be in the US dealerships before the end of the first quarter. Add six months to that for the UK, plus a little more for us, and we're looking like a last quarter of 2020 start. I can tell you though that Australian dealerships are already taking deposits from customers who want to be up near the top of the list. I'd really like to know the price before putting down a deposit, but I'm heading down to my local dealer next week to see what the deal is with the deposit. I'm also wondering how the ordering will go in Australia. I'm certainly hoping we can custom order a car like they do in the US. You know, this colour exterior with that colour interior, the Z51 package, the engine dress-up kit, front lift and so on. It certainly would be a shame if we had to pick something out of a pre-ordered stock. I'll let you know what happens after my visit. Now for the cost. What can we expect to pay for a C8 Corvette in Australia? One way to get some idea of this is to compare the prices of similarly priced cars in the US to the $60,000 price of the base C8 and see what they sell for in Australia. And note that I'm not including the extra on-road costs in this. At the best end of the scale is the new 2019 Toyota Supra, which sells in its high option configuration in the US for US $58,000. The price in Australia has been given as $94,900 Australian dollars. This is a price ratio of about 1.7 to 1 from the US dollar price to the Australian dollar price, and this takes the exchange rate into account. Looking at a Jaguar I-PACE EV400, we get about the same 1.7 to 1 price factor. In this case, US 69,500 to Australian 120,000. The Ford Mustang V8 GT is another that seems to come in at about the 1.75 to 1 factor, although it's hard to find the exact like-for-like -like cars. But when we get to the German cars such as the Porsche Cayman and the Mercedes SLC 300, we find a bigger markup or price ratio. For these cars, it's around a 2 to 1 factor. The Cayman, for instance, is 58,000 US dollars in the US, while it comes in at 119,000 Australian dollars here. I have to add that this has always been the case with these German luxury brands. They've always commanded a higher price in Australia than elsewhere in the world. Applying these price ratios to the C8's base price of US 60,000K, we come up with an Australian price of 102,000 Australian dollars at the bottom end, comparing it to the Supra, Jag or the Ford price ratio. But if we go on the German sports car price ratio, we would expect to pay around 120,000 Australian dollars. This is all a rough guide because it's very hard to match up exactly the same models from country to country. 
In fact, the content of the various models probably is actually different between countries. But I think we can draw the conclusion that the C8 Corvette base price will fall between $102,000 and $120,000 in Australia. And I hope it will be closer to the $102,000 mark. GM North America and Holden will make the final decision on pricing. Do they want to keep the price low to introduce this new car to Australia? Or do they see it as potentially a big profit maker? Only time will tell. But when we look at the Australian price of these other sports car imports, we'll all know how Holden is treating us when we finally see GM's local price. But of course most people will add at least a few options to the car, upping the base price. I was initially looking at buying a genuine base car, which really is great value for money, but I soon decided I needed the Z51 exhaust at least, so I could get that beautiful exhaust note. <laughs> even if I didn't really need an extra 5 horsepower. I would definitely go for the front end lift option, and after seeing how basic the engine looked through that back window in stock configuration, I'd also buy the engine dress up option. These all add up to about US dollars and there's probably more I want the further I look into it. OK, that's all I want to say today, but there's plenty more I want to add later on about the C8 Corvette in Australia. So stay on the lookout for more Australian C8 Corvette content on this channel. And subscribe so you won't miss any of my reports. And ring the bell to get an alert every time there's a new video coming up. Thanks for viewing. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again real soon.